So thank you everyone for coming out. Sunday afternoon, Spanish or Give Time. This is our email address for comments, correspondence, and feedback. There's a website there for more information, utahchristians.org. Everything is inspired by the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, the founder of Charity the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Om Maganati Mananda Syam Gadana Satakyam Chaksudam Militam Yana Tashmai Sri Guru Medhima Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishnam Stavitam Yana Bhutai Sayo Manupa Karamayam Tadati Swapanati Kham I'd like to talk to you today about receiving God's gifts. Krishna God has great things in store for all of us, but too often we think we don't deserve it. We've made too many mistakes. We don't see how it can happen. Instead of receiving the mercy, receiving the approval, receiving the abundance, we come up with all these excuses. I can't get well. You saw the medical report. I can't be blessed. I've had a rough past. I'll never have abundance. I don't have the training. I don't have the education. What you're doing is you're self-sabotaging your future that way. We want to be blessed. We're praying for favor, but because of how we feel about ourselves, we're pushing away the very thing that we want. So unless we learn how to receive, you're not going to have much to give. It is said the gift of righteousness is for all who will receive it. Krishna, God has gifts for you. He has mercy, wisdom for you, favor for you, abundance. You don't earn it. You don't work for it. It's not based on your education, your performance, your background. It's a gift. And the gifts that Krishna, God, gives us are not to squander on our own selves. He gives us gifts so that we can then pass on those benefits to others. So if we don't get good at receiving the gifts, guess what? We're not going to be good at passing them on. Put it another way, if you're not good at feeding yourself, you're not going to have the strength to feed others. Now, Maya, our enemy, whose job it is to keep us in this material world, and consequently, whose job is also to keep us from being enriched and stepping up to our destiny, she will work overtime to try to keep you thinking that you're condemned, feeling unworthy, not good enough, not smart enough, not attractive enough. Our suggestion this afternoon is that instead of believing those lies, try a different approach. Have a receiving mindset. Krishna, I know I've made a lot of mistakes, but I receive your forgiveness. My dream looks impossible, but I receive your favor. I don't see how I could ever get out of debt, but I receive your abundance. I've been fighting this sickness a long time, Lord, but I receive your healing. In the Mundaka Upanishad, it says, Tad viganaitam saguru me bhavigachet samit pani srotram brahmanishtam. In order to learn the art of happiness, one must approach a bona fide spiritual master and submissively receive transcendental knowledge from him. Having heard attentively and rendered service unto him, then one can distribute happiness all over the world. Now, how many people get the opportunity to hear from a bona fide spiritual teacher, one who is immersed in love of God and fully engaged in service of God, trained up by his own previous teacher, and we take all that and we do nothing with it. It's like taking a thousand dollars and using it to light your cigar. And why don't we do anything with it? Because of the way we feel about ourselves. Oh, that sounds good. Of course, I want to be blessed like everyone else. I want to be a blessing to others, but I just don't think in my case it's going to happen. I don't have what it takes. I'm just average. I'm just ordinary. I'm just one of the six billion people on the planet. Again, self-sabotaging. Do yourself a favor and take the gift. Lord, I receive your abundance. I receive your favor. I receive your blessing on my life. I may be ordinary, but you're extraordinary. And if I'm willing, I know that you can make me and mold me into a world changer, a difference maker. 
Now, sometimes Krishna God will tempt us by offering a smaller gift. He wants to give us $5 million, so to speak, but he tests our boldness by showing $500. He wants to see if we're going to sell ourselves cheaply. I heard a story about a monk that very much parallels this own story from our tradition about Jivanat Thakur and Sanatan Goswami. This monk was traveling down the road one day. He found a precious stone, a jewel worth a tremendous amount of money, and he kept it in his bag. Now one day, one day a traveler came by, was very hungry, and the monk opened up his bag to share some food with the traveler, and the traveler saw the jewel. He asked the monk if he knew what it was and how valuable it was, and the monk said he did. Then on a whim, he asked the monk to give it to him. And the monk did so without any hesitation. So the traveler departed, overjoyed, with this unexpected gift of a jewel that was valuable enough to give him wealth and security for the rest of his life. A few days later, however, he came back looking for that monk. And when he found him, he gave the jewel back to him and said, I want, to, I want you to give me something far more precious than that stone. The monk smiled and said, well, what in the world could that be? The traveler said, give me whatever it was that enabled you to give it to me in the first place. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Ram. Hadi, hadi. Our suggestion is that it's about time to quit rejecting the supernatural blessings that Krishna has for you. Learn to boldly expect from the Father. You don't have to force it. You don't have to talk Krishna into it. You don't have to perform up to a certain standard. You just have to be a receiver. Krishna, you promised me that when the son is free, he's free indeed. So, Lord, I receive your freedom. Lord, you said my latter days would be better than the former. So, Lord, I receive a bright future. It is said, blessed are those who can give without remembering and receive without forgetting. I see we have some fathers in the group today. I ask you, fathers, did you ever... <laughs> Propose to your small children a trip to the toy store to buy them some toys. And did your children ever once say, no, dad, we don't deserve it. We're not worthy. We didn't clean our room. I bit my brother. I threw food at my sister. As children, they know how to receive. They didn't start debating whether or not they deserved it. They didn't question your motives. Is he really telling the truth? Is he really mean it? They just received the gifts. Scripture says we have to have that kind of faith as a little child. Children have no problem receiving. They haven't been contaminated with the inferiority. They haven't been contaminated with the lies about how they don't measure up, about what they can't become. But as adults, we start reasoning things out. I didn't perform up to par. Krishna wouldn't ever bless me. My family all struggles. I'm sure I'll struggle too. I'm not attractive. I'm just a C student. I don't feel valuable. There's nothing special about me. Why don't you start receiving the gift? God has said that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He calls you a masterpiece. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. He approved you. He approved you before you could do anything good. He didn't approve you based on your performance. He approved you based on the fact that you're his child created in his image, crowned with his favor. Scripture says, it is the Father's good pleasure to give the kingdom. That means it makes Krishna happy. It's a great joy on the part of God to bless those who keep him in first place, to forgive them, and to show them favor. 
There's only one condition. Will you receive the gift? Will you believe that you're worthy, you're approved, valuable, blessed, favored? Or are you pushing away the gifts, pushing away the love, pushing away the mercy, thinking that you don't deserve it? You could never get well. You could never have that abundance. You could never feel attractive. We've all heard it said on many occasions, it's more blessed to give than to receive. But today our message is, it's also blessed to receive. Every one of us has received things. We in fact don't have anything to give except as we have received, isn't it? Every breath of life, every heartbeat, every conscious thought is a gift. Every person we meet, every friend we have, every relationship that warms the heart and challenges the soul is a gift. Every opportunity to work, every meaningful task, every dollar earned is a gift. Our lifelong task is learning how to receive the gifts of God with gratitude and graciousness. And on his side, God doesn't ever stop giving because that is his very nature. And then the final work of God, or Krishna, is not only to fill our lives with good things, but to teach us how to receive them with thanks. Here's something to think about. We'll give you some time to think about what it is that we're gonna think about. When you refuse the gifts of others, what are you doing? You're depriving them of something which is important to them. Although you don't intend it, it's really a put down. You're implying that they don't have anything worth giving. Now, you should know that if you're gonna have significant relationships, you have to be able to receive as well as to give. When you love someone, don't you want to give something to them as an expression of that love? But if the person that you love declines what we have to give, then how are you gonna express your love? Don't you see how that gets in the way of relationships? The channel through which love flows has been cut off, dammed up. There cannot, in fact, be any meaningful relationship unless we're able to receive as well as to give. And we need to be able to receive because that's the way the Father made his children. Life is about relationships. When you boil it all down, life is either good or it's either less than good depending on the quality of our relationships. We're not meant to live in isolation. We're meant to live in relationships. We're not meant to be self-sufficient. We are meant to be interdependent, receiving, giving, giving, receiving. And in all of that giving and receiving and vice versa, relationships grow and life becomes much more what Krishna or God intended it to be, a two-way street. We do not receive all the time without giving, nor do we give all the time without receiving. It's a two-fold motion. Receiving, giving, giving and receiving. So in the end, if you want to bring our Father great joy, if you want to put a smile on his face, don't forget your receiving mindset. Gratefully receive the blessing of God so that you can, in your turn, be a blessing. Start accepting his gifts. Start accepting those promises. He said you haven't seen, heard, or imagined what he has in store for you. Our mind will tell us just the opposite. You've seen your best days. Nothing good is in your future. No. Tune that out. Father, I receive a greater future than I could ever imagine. I receive your far and beyond favor. Your thoughts are going to tell you your children are never going to get back on course. They'll never fulfill their purpose. But God says, your children will be mighty in the land. He said, the seed of the righteous is blessed. So instead of receiving the doubt, 
receiving the discouragement, how about receiving the faith and receiving the promises? In the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, we read the description of Krishna and Balaram. entering the city of Mathura. As soon as they entered the city of Mathura, the first person they came across was a cloth weaver. The weaver came forward and immediately being enamored with the beauty and the grace of these two young lords, he gave them each a beautiful set of handmade, tailor-made clothes along with ornaments of various colors. Krishna and Balaram looked resplendent, each in his own unique, wonderfully ornamented outfit. They resembled a pair of young elephants, one white and one black, decorated for a festive occasion. Pleased with the weaver, Krishna blessed him that after death he would receive the liberation of attaining an eternal spiritual form like that of the Lord's. And while in this world, he would enjoy opulence, physical strength, influence, memory, and sensory vigor. Then Krishna and Balaram went to the house of a garland maker named Sudama. When Sudama saw them, he bowed down and placed his head at their feet. He could understand what Krishna and Balaram wanted, and with great pleasure, he presented them with garlands of freshly picked fragrant flowers, beautifully adorned with these clothes and garlands, Krishna and Balaram were delighted as well as their companions. Then the lords offered to Sudama, who was bowing before them, whatever benedictions he wanted. What do you think Sudama asked for? He chose unshakable devotion for Krishna, the supreme soul of all existence, friendship with his devotees, and transcendental compassion for all living entities. Not only did Lord Krishna offer him these three benedictions, but he also awarded him strength, long life, fame, beauty, and ever-increasing prosperity for his family. And then Krishna and Balaram took their leave. So even though these were two simple tradesmen, not high-born, not well-connected, they hesitated neither to give gifts to the Lord nor to receive transcendental blessings from him. We don't hear anything in the Bhagavatam about them saying, oh, I didn't deserve that blessing. I'm not worthy of this favor. I've lived a rough life. I have an anger management problem. I use bad language. None of that. Because they knew that God's blessings are not based on our performance. His favor, his healing, his freedom, his mercy. These are gifts, things we don't, in fact, deserve, we don't earn, we don't work for them, we could not make it happen in our own strength. It's simply the goodness of God. Like with Sudama and with the cloth weaver, Krishna is going to bring gifts across your path that you've never seen. Things that are going to leave you awestruck, jaw-dropping blessings. You'll be tempted to dismiss it. I'm not worthy, I don't deserve it, how could this be possible? Our encouragement this afternoon is dare to receive the gift. Let the seed take root. Let the promise get down in your spirit. Abundance, overflow, healing, freedom. Well, true, I don't deserve it. Well, none of us deserve it. It's the gift of God. He wants to show out in your life. He wants to trust you with more resources, more influence, more favor. And when these moments come across your path, don't push them away. Don't talk yourself out of it. I'm not qualified. It's never happened in my family. This is way over my head. Sometimes Krishna in purpose will put you in situations where you have to trust him. Yes, it may be over your head, but it's not over his head. We put a small down payment by Bobby and I on five acres of land over here in a radio station in 1981. And after putting the down payment, it took us 10 years to pay off the mortgage until we fully owned the property. Now this adjacent eight and a half acres, for the entire 10 years we were paying the mortgage on that, had a for sale sign on it. Can you imagine? And even though the radio station tower 
is over there in radio station towers, usually they look for the highest point of land to put them on. That's not actually the highest place. This, this, this is higher. This is part of the ridge that looks down actually on the base of the radio station. A very prominent piece of property, I'm sure you agree. Lo overlooks all of South Utah County. It's visible from I-15, one of the major and busiest freeways in America. So the 10 years that we're paying off month by month the mortgage there, we expected that this property would be snapped up any day. And after 10 years, we, we put the down payment in 81. In, by 1991, the for sale sign still stood here. Didn't make any sense. How could such a desirable piece of property go unsold for 10 years? And I'll tell you why. Because Krishna kept it aside. Krishna kept it hidden in plain sight from any number of potential buyers. Why? He wanted to gift it to you through us, his devotees. Vi and I came out of a comfortable situation in the Los Angeles temple. We wanted to start a mission of Krishna consciousness where there was nothing previously there. And Krishna, just like he did with the weaver, just like he did with Sudama, the garland maker, he wanted to reciprocate with a gift of his own. At first, I started coming up with a lot of excuses. The owner of the land was the Catholic Diocese of Salt Lake City. And I thought, oh, the Catholics will never sell to the Hare Krishnas. And even if they miraculously decide to sell to us, the price will be too high. And even if the price is not too high in order to pay for it, we, we'd have to get bank financing for which we don't qualify. So isn't it bad? Aren't we so good at all too often receiving the negative, receiving the discouragement? You'll never get well. You'll never pay your house out. You'll never be back on course. They'll never give you that land. You've seen your best days. What you're doing is receiving the wrong things. Start receiving the things that Krishna says about you. You can accomplish all things through my power. Receive the confidence to step out in boldness as sons and daughters of Almighty God. It's true, you may not have the strength, you may not have the connections, you may not have the resources, but can I tell you, Krishna has it all, and he wants to bestow mind-blowing gifts upon those who keep him first place. There's only one question. Are you up to receiving his gifts? Are you going to use his gifts to do his work? Are you prepared to take the extra responsibility? Are you willing to shoulder the burden that always comes along with the blessing? On the one hand, we pray, Krishna, do something awesome in my life. Let me impact the world. And then when the opportunity comes, first thing we do is we try to talk ourselves out of it. Don't self-sabotage yourself. Don't sabotage the greatness that God has in mind for your life. Don't let fear, sense of unworthiness, doubt, not feeling adequate, keep you from stepping up to levels that you never dreamed about. Long story short, this land right here, these eight and a half acres on which the temple sits today, not counting the value of the temple itself, Everybody who knows anything about real estate knows that this eight and a half acres of land is worth today well over a million dollars. Well, in 1991, we were able to purchase it, purchase it with a small down payment of $25,000, owner financed by the Catholic Church for a total purchase price of $75,000. <laughs> what do we learn from this? If you keep him first place, Krishna or God promises he will do exceedingly above and beyond what you could ever imagine. So let's say to ourselves today, Krishna, I receive the favor. I receive the temple in Spanish Fork. I receive the temple in Salt Lake City. I receive the radio station. I receive the color festivals. I receive the business. I receive the influence. I receive the victory. Prabhupada, our spiritual master, was once famously quoted, while many gurus would turn up their nose and push money away, he would take all the money of the world. The 
interesting thing is that he wouldn't spend a penny on himself. But he said, we could use all the money of the world for temples, festivals, businesses, to honor God far and wide. Don't push away the things you're believing for. Dare to receive them. You may not see how. It looks unlikely. Well, the good news is you don't have to figure it out. All you have to do is believe. And when you believe, all things are possible. When you believe, Angels go to work. Chains are broken. Favors released and good breaks are set into motion. Scripture says God has blessings stored up for the righteousness. Our message today is there's blessings for each and every one of you that have your name on them. Businesses, houses, songs, books, ministries, inventions, healing, freedom, children, spouses. They already belong to you. And at the right time, Krishna's intention is to release them. Now live with a receiving mentality. Every morning, Lord, I receive your love today. I'm going to love myself and I'm going to love others. Lord, I receive your grace. I'm not going to live worried. I'm not going to live stressed out. Or how about, Lord, thank you for the blessings that are chasing me down. Goodness and mercy are following me. My latter days will be better than my former days. You cannot love others the way you should without first loving yourself. You're supposed to feel good about the person that God made. It's not honoring Krishna to go around down on yourself, feeling unworthy, like you don't measure. Scripture says that God has crowned you with his favor. So if you need to, take a moment to adjust the crown of favor on your head. Do you want to honor God with your life? Well, Put your crown on, put your shoulders back, hold your head up high, and receive the honor. You're supposed to feel good about the way God created you to be. That's not being selfish. That's receiving the approval, receiving the honor. Think about this for a moment. That when God created the universe, the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, at the end of his creation, he stopped, he paused, and he said, I did good. That was good. He complimented himself. Nobody else was around to hear it, but he said, I did good today. Showing us a principle. Have you ever said to yourself, I did good today. I looked good today. I worked hard today. I made a difference in others' lives today. Scripture said our faith is made effective when we acknowledge everything good. Your faith is not effective when you're pointing out your flaws, focused on your shortcomings, down on yourself. Receive his favor. Lord, thank you that you're shining on my life, taking me where I've never dreamed. Lord, this seems to be too good to be true, but I'm a believer and not a doubter. Krishna, bring it on. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama. Rama, Rama, Hari Hari. Every day, receive what Krishna says about you. You're loved, you're valued, you're approved, you're worthy, you're masterpiece, you're blessed, you're favored, you're victorious. Friends, it's the God's pleasure, it's the Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. He has all these gifts for you, all these promises He's spoken. Dreams that he's whispered to you in the middle of the night now, instead of dismissing it, have this receiving mindset. With that childlike faith, Krishna, I'm in agreement. I know you can do it. Let it happen. Bring it on. If you do this, I believe Krishna's going to do things in your life that will leave you awestruck. New doors are going to open. The right people will track you down. Promotions, healing, blessings, breakthroughs, the fullness of your destiny in this life, next life, back to home, back to God. If any of that sounds good to you, we encourage you to raise your hands with us to the sky and say together, Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Bless you all. Hare Ho.
Boom. We'll uh, encourage you to stand and come up to the front with us so we're not all alone up here. And let's see, Radhika Jeevan, would you like to lead the kirtan?
Bhagavad Gita.